Welcome. Wonderful to have all of you joining us this evening. What a special celebration. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the Gallery and all of the staff, I would like to welcome you to the opening reception for the exhibition in the spirit of Nahaha'it. And our people are our youth and our elders and our community members and our ancestors and all of us who've lived uh, on, on, on these great, great lands in Burke. And I think really this is what this is all about, is recognizing our culture and our people. So congratulations to, to our youth, uh, all of our youth. The story of how this exhibition came about began with a friendship between Roxanne Lindley and myself. Together we decided to explore the theme of Nahahai, uh, commonly known as Ogopogo. I think the wonderful thing about this exhibition is the fact that we have six Okanagan artists all working in different media. The diversity of the work is really quite extraordinary. I had a very special insight because I got to go to each artist's studio and see them working on their pieces from beginning to end. Paul is, uh, is the Okanagan name for the cattail. And I chose to use that because I had been working with it a lot over the la last few years and I studied it in every which way I could and I learned to work with it in traditional format. And then I worked, then I began to bring it into contemporary form. And so when I had this opportunity to work with Nahahit, I, 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 it took me back to a story that my mother told me about when she was young and, and how her, uh, they were called down to the lake at, at one time by a friend that had seen what looked like Nahakit on, laying on the beach. And he, he, was, he was devastated, full of fear, he didn't know what it was. And by the time everybody got down to the lake, on the other side of the lake from here was uh, evidence of it being there. The sand was wet where it was lying, where it was otherwise dry. And it, it had uh, crawled out onto the ice, and it was around, around uh, Easter time. There was a bit of ice on the lake, so it crawled out onto the lake and found a hole and went in. So the sand also led, its, uh, led out onto the ice as well. 
So because of that, it really inspired me to do something with that because it, it is real. And, and mom's, my mother says after that, they, her, yeah, the, her people used to say, well, you know where it came in at? Down there by those cattails. That's where it came in. And it just seemed to fit, fall together that I should use these cattails, continue to use them and bring it out in, in this piece. What I attempted or what I'm, I'm trying to do with that piece in particular is to draw the connection between the past and the present and also the visualizing experience of the Okanagan people, tying it all in with our story of creation, our Chapdik, our Chip Chapdik, which sets out very specific guidelines on how we must live and govern ourselves between here, now, and the netherworld. With total respect to my ancestors uh, who have, uh, have left these uh, pictographs behind, my pictograph shouldn't be considered as, as the spiritual context. What they are is an invitation for people to actually look and experience the First Nations cultural aspects, the, uh, the elliptical figure with the three points on it, um, that is the vessel of life. Uh, containing the past, the present, and the future. It is guided by the past, invigorated by the present, and providing for the future. The uh, round, uh, the round, um, I, people say it's a moon, I call it a moon, but uh, that again is, is the, is the everlast, ever, everlasting cycle of life, the circle of life, and uh, you know, uh, life, death, night, day, um, they're all one and the same. and. Uh, and of course, uh, Nkaha I, he is uh, you know, depicted on the bottom, and uh, he is my rendition of what I've seen. And, uh, and I guess, yes, that to some point it was a visualizing experience, um, but by no means um, anything compared to uh, the practices my ancestors would have endured to uh, come up with uh, such a, a piece. The piece that I created um, was made out of garbage and it was garbage that I collected uh, from the lake, from the water. Uh, I collected it from the shore and stuff like that. And when I looked at this piece or this exhibition originally and when I thought about it before I started creating it, one of the things that I really wanted to put out there um, to the people, um, to all people, was uh, the importance of uh, of our responsibility to the environment. So in creating that piece, it allowed me to uh, create an awareness of how irresponsible we all are towards Mother Nature, especially towards the water. Um, in, in creating the piece, um, what I did is I tried to incorporate lots of uh, different parts of society, things that, that are beneficial but things that are really damaging. In my piece I had um, pieces of oil can, I had gas, I had things like fishing line, I had things like badminton nets. Everything that we look at is convenience, uh, things that we need, things that we use on a daily basis, but really to try and put out there in, in the message that all of these things that we have are really quite harmful if we don't be completely responsible for them. So with that piece, um, it allowed me to do that. It allowed me to think about the words of my father, of my people, of uh, the importance of those spirits in the lake, the importance of, of honoring and respecting. And I believe that my piece showed that because it showed how we're not honoring and how we're not re respecting. And not just as Okanagans, I wanted my piece to, to be able to reach out to, to native, to non-native, to all of us because we all use the water, we all drink the water, we all bathe in the water and stuff like that. So that's what I wanted to do was to uh, put something out there that, that would tweak people, that would pinch people, that might annoy people, that might upset people. Um, I know that when I was done creating it and I looked at it, I felt sadness. Uh, I felt that I hadn't um, been fulfilling my responsibility as a protector, as an environmentalist, but 
to have it and to look at it and to have it right in my face was a real reality check. When we were looking at this show, um, that of course came up and I had to, as an Okanagan person, I had to look within myself and for many years the, the symbol, the picture, the thought, the concept of Nechachait has been trivialized. It's been used for marketing, it's been used to promo uh, promote tourism in the city of Kelowna. And when we did this show and we sang and we drummed, um, our people put themselves out there. To me, uh, the most important part of the show was reclaiming who we are. It was repatriation. It was us saying, this is Nechacha Eich. This has been here for 10,000 years plus. This is a part of who we are today. This is us. And it was, uh, it was part of us saying, no, this is who we are. Um, and we're going to own it and we're proud to own it and we will continue to own it. And it was teaching our people the importance of gra grasping those beautiful concepts of our culture. Actually, back before I knew I was going to be even knew that I could do animation or take, take a course on it, I was in my early 20s and I started to visit my sister Linda and she's a native artist and I started sitting down with her and I started drawing again which was what I used to do when I was a kid. I thought about it for a while and I thought what would that be like to create my art and then convert it into moving art and bring it, it's more like bringing it alive and I thought wow I, so I went and tried, put my portfolio in, and I got picked. And you have to submit a full portfolio of artwork, otherwise they don't even let you in the course. You have to be a fairly good artist, otherwise you can't get in. And some of my art form back then was a lot of cartoon art, and it was quite, I would you say, um, adult form art. <laughs> Funny. And uh, that was what got them actually that let me in because I wasn't afraid to do any type of art form. The Ogopogo itself, I wanted it to look spiritual so I made the Ogopogo come out of the water and up into the sky and it's got, it has um, an aura around it to give it that spiritual look and it, it's flying up towards the sun. I guess I would call myself a new age uh, native artist where I'm using the new tools, the computer, my drawing, and the technology to create the art form that I'm doing right now. It's, I guess it, it's totally, some people would, I guess, see it as totally different than, I get. how would you say it? They wouldn't call me a native artist once they saw it, but once they saw my work, they can see it. As a First Nations Okanagan artist, of course being Okanagan means Ogopogo, Nahai. He's blended right in there with everything in our culture. He is a spiritual guider that if anyone needed him could go to him and ask him questions and he'd be there to help. And he's very wise to only show himself to people who do need his help and won't hurt him or will have great respect for him. So for me to have a piece representing Nahai is wonderful because People think he's just a tourist attraction thing, but not realizing he's been around for years on years, and he's there to help if anyone ever needs him. Beadwork actually picked up really quite recently, maybe two years, maybe. I always found beadwork fascinating. My mom has beadwork pieces hanging in her house from my great grandma and stuff, and just working with your hands. I've always loved working with my hands, but picking up that kind of craft, it's really, almost meditation-like, to be just in a trance and beading away and letting your creativity flow through beads is quite wonderful. And once I picked it up, I just took to it. I only started a couple years ago, but my teacher, when I first picked up beading, was astonished by how I took to it like a duck to water when I first started beading and increased very quickly from just doing earrings to necklaces and then to peyote stitch was just supposed to be a lot harder.
Oh, I feel wonderful, especially seeing how I just started to have that much exposure right away just for something that I wanted to do. Not that I was trying to do it for somebody else, but showing that I had a piece of work that I had done that I had respect for and created that somebody else felt the same way and wanted to see it. As an Okanagan First Nations artist, I, uh, I've drawn to gourds because they're used, you know, universally all over the world, and they've, they're important in trade, and they're a part of everybody's history, historically, and I like that. Um, they're inspirational to me. They ha the gourds have an energy of their own, and <clears throat> I just add to that who I am and how I see the world. So it's a marriage of what the gourds bring and an expression also of who I am. Nahaik is something that when I was younger, I actually was afraid as a young girl of Ogopogo. And I remember swimming in the lake and going out, following my grandfather out, swimming in the moonlight, in the dark, and just this overwhelming sense of fear coming over me, wondering what was in the water in the dark, you know, depths and thinking of Ogopogo and telling my grandfather, I'm scared, I, you know, I want to go back. And having him swim back to me and saying, you know, climb up on my back, granddaughter, I want to tell you a story. And I remember the moonlight shining on his silver gray hair and climbing up on his big strong back and just feeling so safe as he went in to explain his story and, and thoughts of Ogopogo and that Ogopogo is there, um, that's Ogopogo's home and it's there for all of us and we use it to sustain ourselves, to enjoy for our survival. Well, this exhibition, as a, as a group effort, um, the, it just felt so alive, so whole, and the expressions of the thoughts and feelings of <clears throat> all of the other artists individually and as a whole come together, and the strength, what the spirit of the show was, um, it was amazing. I was honored to, to share in that. This exhibition has been a spiritual journey for me as a curator. I am forever grateful to the Okanagan people, especially my adopted family and friends of the West Bank First Nation. Why, Limlin?
A really exciting part of this project is the Artist Bundle, which will create an educational legacy. The bundles will go out to all the schools in School District 23 so that teachers and students can use them in the classroom. They'll go out to the Okanagan Nation and to select galleries and museums across the country. I think this is a really wonderful opportunity for people to learn about the Okanagan culture and a wonderful opportunity for the Okanagan people to share their wisdom, their knowledge and their creativity. The exhibition was an overwhelming success. It was all of what we dreamed about in enabling the gallery to bridge to the community the wonderful stories that, are, that West Bank First Nations have to offer. Choosing the Ogopogo as the theme was a very strong lead-in for the community. We all have stories and I believe the exhibition was a way of reinforcing those stories, enabling many community members to come in and find their link with their stories to the stories that were in the exhibition.